guys how are you i hope so that you will be fine and enjoying good health today i have selected a topic on carpal tunnel syndrome let us start that carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by pressure on the median nerve the carpal tunnel syndrome is a narrow passageway surrounded by bones and ligaments on the palm side of the hand when the median nerve is compressed symptoms can include numbness tingling and weakness in the hand and arm the anatomy of the wrist health problems and possibly repetitive hand movements can contribute to carpal tunnel syndrome proper treatment usually relieves the tingling and numbness and restores wrist and hand function what are the symptoms carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms usually start gradually and include tingling or numbness you may notice tingling and numbness in the fingers or hand usually the thumb and index middle or ring fingers are affected but not the little finger you might feel a sensation like an electric shock in these fingers and the sensation may travel from the wrist up the arm these symptoms often occur while holding a steering wheel phone or newspaper or may wake you from sleep Many people shake out their hands to try to relieve their symptoms. The numb feeling may become constant over time. There might be weakness, you may experience weakness in the hand and drop objects from your hands and this may be due to the numbness in the hand or weakness of the thumb pinching muscles which are also controlled by the median nerve. Went to see a doctor, see your doctor, health care provider if you have signs and symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. that interfere with your normal activities and sleep patterns permanent nerve and muscle damage can occur without treatment what are the causes of carpal tunnel syndrome it is caused by the pressure on the median nerve the median nerve runs from the forearm through a passage vein the wrist carpal tunnel to the hand it provides sensation to the palm side of the thumb and fingers except the little finger it also provides nerve signals to move the muscles around the base of the thumb motor function Anything that is squeezes or irritates the median nerve in the carpal tunnel space may lead to carpal tunnel syndrome. A wrist fracture can narrow the carpal tunnel and irritate the nerve as can the swelling and inflammation caused by the rheumatoid arthritis. Many times there is no single cause of carpal tunnel syndrome it may be that a combination of risk factors contributes to the development of the condition. What are the risk factors? A number of factors have been associated with the carpal tunnel syndrome. Although they may not directly cause carpal tunnel syndrome, they can increase the risk of irritation or damage to the median nerve, and these include anatomic factors, a wrist fracture or dislocation or arthritis that deforms the small bones in the wrist can alter the space within the carpal tunnel and put pressure on the median nerve. People who have a smaller carpal tunnel may be more likely to have carpal tunnel syndrome. Then one factor is the sex. Carpal tunnel syndrome is generally more common in women, and this may be because the carpal tunnel area is relatively smaller in women than in men. So gender is a major factor also. Women who have carpal tunnel syndrome may have a smaller carpal tunnel than women who don't have the condition. Then there may be risk factors involving nerve damaging conditions. Some chronic illnesses such as diabetes increases the risk of nerve damage. Rheumatoid arthritis also increases the risk of nerve damage including damage to the median nerve then some inflammatory conditions might affect such as rheumatoid arthritis an inflammatory component can affect the lining around the tendons in the wrist and put pressures on the median nerve then some medications might be a risk factor some studies have shown a link between the carpal tunnel syndrome and the use of anestrozole aerimedix a drug used to treat the breast cancer might be involved and uh, obesity is also a risk factor for carpal tunnel syndrome then body fluid changes fluid retention may increase the pressure within the carpal tunnel and irritating the median nerve and this is common during pregnancy and menopause carpal tunnel syndrome associated with pregnancy generally gets better on its own after pregnancy while other medical conditions can be a risk factor for carpal tunnel syndrome certain conditions such as menopause thyroid disorders kidney failure hypothyroidism and lymphedema may increase the chances of carpal tunnel syndrome then workplace factors might be involved 
working with vibrating tools or an assembly line that requires prolonged or repetitive flexing of the wrist may create harmful pressure on the median nerve or worsen existing nerve damage especially if the work is done in a cold environment however the scientific evidence is conflicting and these factors have not been established as direct causes of carpal tunnel syndrome several studies have evaluated whether there is an association between computer use and carpal tunnel syndrome some evidence suggests that it is mouse use and not the use of the keyboard that may be the problem however there has not been enough quality and consistent evidence to support extensive computer use as a risk factor for carpal tunnel syndrome although it may cause a different form of hand pain what are the prevention measures there are no proven strategies to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome but you can minimize the stress on the hands and wrists with these methods reduce your force and relax your grip if your work involves a cash register or keyboard for instance hit the keys softly for prolonged handwriting use a big pen with an oversized soft grip adapter and free flowing ink Take short frequent breaks, gently stretch and bend hands and wrists periodically alternate tasks when possible there is especially important if you use equipment that vibrates or that requires you to exert a great amount of force even a few minutes each hour can make a difference watch your form avoid bending your wrist all the way up or down a relaxed middle position is best keep your keyboard at elbow height or el- slightly lower then it improve your posture incorrect posture rolls shoulders forward shortening the neck and shoulder muscles and compressing the nerves in the neck this can affect the wrist fingers and hands and cause neck pain change your computer mouse make sure that your computer mouse is comfortable and doesn't strain your wrist keep your hands warm you are more likely to develop hand pain and stiffness if you work in cold environment if you cannot control the temperature at work put on fingerless gloves that keeps the hands and wrist warm then we come to the diagnosis and treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome your provider may ask you some questions and conduct one or more of the following tests to determine whether you have carpal tunnel syndrome such, such as history of the symptoms Your health provider will review the pattern of the symptoms for example because the median nerve does not provide sensation to the little finger symptoms in that finger may indicate a problem other than carpal tunnel syndrome then carpal tunnel syndrome usually occur while holding a phone or a newspaper or gripping a steering wheel they also tend to occur at night and may wake you during the night or you may notice the numbness when you wake up in the morning then physical examination your uh, healthcare provider will conduct a physical examination he or she will test the feeling in the fingers and the stretching of the muscles in the hands and bending the wrist tapping on the nerve or simply pressing on the nerve can trigger symptoms in many people then x-rays some providers recommend an x-ray of the affected wrist to exclude other causes of the wrist pain such as arthritis or a fracture however x-rays are not helpful in making a diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome Then ultrasound your health provider may recommend an ultrasound of your wrist to get a good picture of the bones and nerves and this can help determine whether the nerve is being compressed then electromyography this test measures the tiny electrical discharges produced in the muscles during this test your provider insert a thin needle electrode into specific muscles to evaluate the electrical activity when muscles contract and rest This test can identify damage to the muscles controlled by the median nerve and may also rule out other conditions. Then nerve conduction is studied in a variation of the electromyography. Two electrodes are tapped to the skin. A small shock is passed through the median nerve to see if electrical impulses are slowed in the carpal tunnel. This test may be used to diagnose the condition and to rule out other conditions. So, what is about the treatment as far as treatment is concerned? treatment of the carpal tunnel syndrome as early as possible should be started after symptoms start in the early stages simple things that you can do for yourself may make the problem go away for example two more frequent breaks to rest the hands avoid activities that make symptoms worse apply cold packs to reduce swelling 
Other treatment options include wrist splinting, medication and surgery. Splinting and other conservative treatments are more likely to help if you have had only mild to moderate symptoms that come and go for less than 10 months. If you have numbness in your hand, you need to see a healthcare provider. Non-surgical therapy includes, if the condition is diagnosed early, non-surgical methods may help improve carpal tunnel syndrome including wrist splinting. A splint that holds the wrist still while you sleep can help relieve nighttime symptoms of tingling and numbness even though you only wear the splint at night. It can also help prevent daytime symptoms. Nighttime splinting may also be a good option if you are pregnant because it does not involve the use of any medication to be effective. Non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and sets such as ibuprofen may help relieve pain from carpal tunnel syndrome in the short term and there is not evidence however that these drugs improve carpal tunnel syndrome. Then the corticosteroid. Your provider may inject the carpal tunnel with a corticosteroid such as cortisone to relieve pain. Sometimes the provider uses an ultrasound to guide these injections. Corticosteroid decrease inflammation and swelling which relieves pressure on the median nerve. Oral corticosteroids are not considered as effective as corticosteroid injections for treating carpal tunnel syndrome. If carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by the rheumatoid arthritis or another inflammatory arthritis, then treating the arthritis may reduce symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. However, this is unproved. Then surgery may be the option. Surgery may be appropriate if symptoms are severe or do not respond to the treatments. The goal of carpal tunnel surgery is to relieve pressure by cutting the ligament pressing on the median nerve. The surgery may be performed with two different techniques, endoscopic surgery and an open surgery. In endoscopic surgery, your surgeon uses a telescope-like device with a tiny camera attached to it endoscope to see inside the carpal tunnel. Your surgeon cuts the ligament through one or two small incisions in the hand or wrist and some surgeons may use ultrasound instead of a telescope to guide the tool that cuts the ligament. Endoscopic surgery may result in less pain than does open surgery in the first few days or weeks after surgery. Then is the option, second one is open surgery. Your surgeon makes an incision in the palm of the hand over the carpal tunnel and cuts through the ligament to free the nerve. Discuss the risks and benefits of each technique with your surgeon before surgery. Surgery risks may include incomplete release of the ligament, wound infection, scar formation, injuries to the nerves or blood vessels. During the healing process after the surgery, the ligament tissues gradually grow back together while allowing more room for the nerve. And this internal healing process typically takes several months, but the skin heals in a few weeks. Your Healthcare provider generally will encourage you to use the hand after the ligament has healed, gradually working back to normal use of the hand while initially avoiding forceful hand motions or extreme waist positions. Soreness or weakness may take from several weeks to a few months to resolve after surgery. If your symptoms were not severe, symptoms may not go away completely after surgery. So this was all about the carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, you may also take help from home remedies and changing your lifestyle. These steps may provide temporary symptoms relief, take short frequent breaks from repetitive activities involving the use of your hands, lose weight if you are overweight or obese, rotate the wrist and stretch the palms and fingers. Take a pain reliever such as aspirin, ibuprofen or naproxen sodium, Aleve and wear a snug not tight wrist splint at night you can find these over the counter at most drug stores or pharmacies avoid sleeping on the hands if pain numbness or weakness recurs and persist you must seek your healthcare provider then the alternative medicine will be also helpful to you integrate alternative therapies into your treatment plan to help you to cope with the carpal tunnel syndrome and you may have to experiment to find a treatment that works for you. Always check with your provider before trying any complementary alternative treatments such as yoga, posture, design for strengthening, stretching and balancing the upper body and joints may help reduce pain and improve grip strength. Then hand therapy. Early research suggests that certain physical and occupational hand therapy techniques may reduce symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. Then ultrasound therapy, high intensity ultrasound can be used to raise the temperature of a targeted area of the body tissue to reduce pain and promote healing. 
Research shows inconsistent results with this therapy, but a course of ultrasound therapy over several weeks may help reduce symptoms. You can prepare for your appointment. Here's some information to help you get ready for your appointment and what to expect from your healthcare provider. You can, what you can do, take note of what when your symptoms are at their worst and does any particular activity seem to make them worse or do you notice them at a particular time of day? Keep track of the things you have tried to make the symptoms better. Write down the medications you have taken to manage your symptoms. What to expect from your doctor? Your healthcare provider usually wants to know how long you have had this problem. If it is, if it came on suddenly or developed over time. If it is getting better, worse or staying the same. If there are certain activities that seem to cause it make it worse or make it better. What you can do in the meantime if you think you have a carpal tunnel syndrome, there are some simple things you can do before you see a provider for the first time. First try to determine whether any activities seem to make it worse and change how you do those or avoid them if possible. For example, if driving seems to cause symptoms, try changing the position of the hands on the steering wheel. Also. There, there is some cost involved. There is no harm in trying a wrist splint at night to see if that has the symptoms. This was all about the copper tunnel syndrome that I have discussed here and I hope so that this video will be very informative for the audience. And In the last I will end my uh, discussion with the two quotes of Winston Churchill One is that once you are so unfortunate as to be drowned into war no price is too great to pay for an early and victorious and uh, another one is the most brilliant achievement was my ability to be able to persuade my wife to marry me and the last one is the price of greatness is responsibility if the audience have liked this video then kindly don't forget to subscribe my channel and thank you for listening to this video and have a wonderful nice day thank you very much